Thank you for calling AT&T Roadside Assistance. This is Maddie. May I have your mobile number to better assist you? 561-573-2815. Okay, give me one moment to pull up the account. And what's the name on it? Corey Jones. Okay. Yeah, I see Delray, Delray Beach House. Yeah. All right. And what can I do for you tonight? I need to get a tow. I'm all okay. broke down. And is this a uh, mobile number with the vehicle? Yes. Yeah. Okay. What's wrong with the vehicle? Um, it won't start. Okay. And is it a four-wheel drive? Um, I think it's two-wheel. What's the address of the vehicle location? I'm off uh, the PGA uh, stop-down exit. Hello? Hello, I'm here. Okay. 195. On 95? On 95 exit uh, PGA okay. um, stop-down. Okay. Is there any um, – hold on, let me write stop-down down. down. Is there any buildings, landmarks, anything like that, that I could use to pinpoint your address? Stop. I'm good. Yeah, I'm good. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Um, um, there's gunshots. This is Gardens Alpha 1. I just got one down. I just shot one person. I'm at that off ramp right behind Double Tree. Black male. You're behind the Double Tree? I'm on the off ramp. 95 South on off ramp. Off the Double Tree. I'm, I am not covered in anything right now. And, all right. Uh, give me some units. I got one down. I got one man down. Have five right, right, stand by. Roger, you all right? Yeah, man. I'm good. I'm good. Drop the right. On the off ramp, right? On the off ramp, give me some units. I've lost okay. contact with him. I don't know where he is. All right, you got it, buddy. Where's right, your radio? Where's your radio, Raj? My radio's in the van right now. I don't have it with me. I'm on the, right. That's why I'm on the phone. All right, stay on the phone, buddy. What we? What's the guy look like? Black male wearing all black dress. Had a silver handgun in his right hand. I came out, I saw him come out with a handgun, I gave him commands, I identified myself, and he turned, pointed the gun at me, started running, I shot him. I've lost contact, 65 to 28 on the, on the SUV. Go ahead. It's going to be a Florida 28 of 286 Papa Romeo Hotel, 286 PR8. Don't know yet. Spike, put that out now. All right, it's a 08 Hyundai Pop 286 Papa Romeo Hotel. Yes, 286 All right, it's Papa coming Romeo. back. It's coming back on a four-door Hyundai Gray. Yeah, SUV. Uh, yeah, it's out of Lake Worth. It's not stolen or anything. All right, man. All right, stay on the phone. 
Where's the van right, at? You. Where's your van at? In the double I'm, tree I'm, lot? I'm no, no, no. Right on the off ramp. You'll see my van right there. I'm actually, I'm walking back to my van. I'm back to my van in the car. Alright, at least three to four times. Uh, Alright, you got your radio now? No, 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 hold on, not yet, not yet. Alright, I got units, I got units coming. Alright, man, thank you. Alright, stay on the phone, man, alright, buddy? Alright, guns off, one. I'm by the radio now. 26, drive mail, hit three to four times, 51, 50, 51 stage. 350, we're in the parking lot. I'm not in the parking lot. I'm right on the off ramp. He ran across into the grass. Floor of 95. Guys, right here, right here, right here. He ran, guys. He ran in that direction. Ran in that direction. I I lost visual of him. 348. I'm on 95. Just advise that they went on. Update. Prosecutors said officer lied in Corey Jones shooting when Palm Beach Gardens police officer Newman Rasha called 911. He acted as if he had not yet fired the shots that killed Corey Jones. He lied, a 60-page state attorney's office report released Tuesday said, Jones was already dead. Newman Rasha in his own words, read a transcript of his statement to investigators in the call, he frantically yelled for Jones to drop his gun. Four hours later, Raja would tell investigators he didn't fire the final three of six shots until after the call for help. But investigators had another recording, one Raja didn't know about at the time, that showed the shots had been fired 33 seconds before Raja dialed. The audio recording from the call reveals Raja lied when he said he made his 911 call before he fired his second volley of shots, the report states. Review the post's full coverage of the Corey Jones shooting the report was among more than 3,000 pages of documents and 50 video and audio recordings, evidence in the high-profile 2015 shooting that prosecutors released on Tuesday. Ten media organizations, including the Palm Beach Post, split the $5,300 charge to obtain the records. A chilling animation superimposing Jones' conversation with a roadside assistance operator to the movement of Jones and Russia accompanied the report. The FBI, invited to aid the investigation by Palm Beach County Sheriff Rick Bradshaw, produced the animation. The report was unsparing, and it paints a picture of an officer who made egregious mistakes and wasn't truthful to investigators who interviewed him at the scene, with his lawyer present, four hours after the shooting. Russia faces charges of manslaughter by culpable negligence and attempted first-degree murder with a firearm, and he was fired from the Palm Beach Gardens Police Department about three weeks after the shooting. He has been on house arrest since June. Says he offered help on the night of the shooting, Raja was assigned to work in plain clothes, to look out for car burglars in parking lots. Jones, 31 was in his broken-down SUV on the Interstate 95 off-ramp at PGA Boulevard. During his sworn statement to prosecutors, Raja said he drove to the SUV about 3.15 a.m., got out and clearly and repeatedly identified himself as a police officer after confronting Jones. He even offered to help Jones, Raja said. But Raja didn't know that Jones was on the hold awaiting a tow truck from his call to AT&T roadside assistance. The recording of that call, also released Tuesday, revealed Jones twice telling Raja, I'm good. Really? Raja replied twice. This reply was sarcastic and confrontational, the investigator wrote in his report. It was obviously not a sincere offer of help. More importantly, the recording reveals Russia never identified himself to be a police officer. Russia told investigators he thought Joe's vehicle was unoccupied. When he got out of his unmarked white police surveillance van and walked to the SUV, he wasn't wearing his uniform, protective vest, badge, department-issued handgun or radio. And I didn't think there was anybody in there. And as I got close to the vehicle, and uh, the door swung open and, uh, this guy jumps outside immediately, Rasha told investigators. He told investigators that because he thought the car empty, 
He left his duty gun and protective vest in his van. He did carry his department-approved backup gun in a waistband holder. I kinda got like caught with my pants down at that point, Rasha said. I said, hey, man, police, can I help you? And the second I said police, he jumped back and I clearly remember him drawing and pointing a gun at me, Rasha told investigators later that morning. Raja said he saw the silver muzzle of .38 caliber gun and the flashing red laser sight. Raja fired three shots, paused ten seconds, and fired three more times, the roadside assistance recording revealed. The musician was killed by a shot to the chest. Jones' gun was found 80 feet away from his body. The sequence of events as Raja described was unusual and easily refuted by the evidence. Because Raja didn't have a radio, he said he used his cell phone to call 911 after firing three shots. Then he said he fired three more shots. Brother's last words the recording of his 911 call reveals him yelling at Jones to drop the gun. But it doesn't capture the three other shots. He had stopped shooting 33 seconds before he called 911, the roadside assistance recording revealed. Richard Lubin, Russia's defense attorney, did not comment. Jones' brother, Clinton C.J. Jones, was glad to hear that investigators flat out said Russia lied. He said he's always believed that. I listened to every single second of the audio and video and it was pretty crazy to hear my brother's last words basically crying out for help and a police officer was the one that killed him, he said. It doesn't make any sense. He really is a stupid, selfish, savage, no heart human being to kill Corey Jones. A civil suit filed by Jones' father in July, a suit on hold as the criminal case plays out, claims the Palm Beach Gardens Police Department had an unofficial policy of allowing the use of excessive force by officers. The lawsuit claims Raja was improperly supervised and that he should not have been hired after he worked for Atlantis Police where he allegedly had a clear pattern of disciplinary actions for not following orders. Raja wasn't following orders when he confronted Jones, according to a supervisor who said he was a little upset and disappointed when he found out what Raja was wearing. Palm Beach Gardens Police Sergeant Javier Garcia told investigators that Raja was told for safety reasons, to wear his tactical vest and to identify yourself as a police officer. I know that he knows better and that he knew better than to be out in plain clothes and not with his gear on, Garcia told investigators. According to William Daniel Libby, a police training expert and consultant hired by prosecutors, Russia violated police procedure in three ways, in his initial approach of Jones' vehicle, by driving against traffic partially blocking the roadway and failing to wait for a marked vehicle. In the way he approached Jones himself, by not audibly identifying himself as an officer, as indicated by recordings. By failing to obey supervisor's directions to always wear his vest and badge. Jones, who lived in the Boynton Beach area, worked as a building manager for the Delray Beach Housing Authority and was studying to become a general contractor. Ray Whiteley, the spokesman for the Boynton Beach Coalition of Clergy, said he struggled as he listened to the audio recording released for the first time Tuesday because it contained Jones' voice. Whiteley said Raja in his statements tried to portray Jones as violent, but the recordings show him as respectable and honorable. It's very disturbing, and it hurts, it really hurts, to listen to the tapes and hear Corey's voice, Whiteley said. The tape was about five minutes. It took me 20 minutes to listen to it, because I couldn't listen to it in its entirety. It was that disturbing. Staff writers Christine Stapleton, Jane Musgrave, Sarah Peters, Pat Beale and Joe Capazzi contributed to this story.